We now move to topical questions. Question number one, Hugh Henry. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the appropriateness of comments made by the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning in relation to the Chair of Stowe College. Cabinet Secretary Michael Russell. The Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government believes that the college sector, like any other, needs to be led and governed by people of the highest quality and standards. Chief amongst their attributes must always be mutual trust and respect. The Scottish Government expects all those who lead and govern our colleges to conduct themselves in a way which is consistent with that approach. Hugh Henry. Uh, President Officer, can we leave aside the issue of recording meetings for accuracy or indeed whether it is in the public interest to publicise what the Cabinet Secretary says or how he behaves at meetings? The issue is his reaction to this event. Mm -hmm. I have been contacted by FE staff who believe that the Cabinet Secretary is behaving inappropriately and that he is attempting to bully and intimidate. On reflection, Cabinet Secretary, would you not agree that you could have handled this better? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding Officer, the issue is that uh, in a meeting of chairs and principals, a recording was made uh, with a surreptitious device, which, uh, alas, nobody was told it was being recorded and no permission was sought from anybody who was present. I think that did lead and has led to a breakdown in the relationship that should exist uh, between the individual concerned and not just myself, but many of their colleagues. Hugh Henry. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I think Mr Ramsey might dispute that it was surreptitious, but many staff in education and further education are contacting me to say that they are frightened to speak out about the way that the Cabinet Secretary is treating them. And surely the way that he has behaved towards Mr Ramsey reinforces their fears. Cabinet Secretary, is it not time to reflect, to rebuild relationships and to start by apologising to Mr Ramsey? Cabinet Secretary. I'm glad to say that the meeting in question uh, was a very positive one, as most of my meetings with the college sector are. We're engaged in a process of radical reform in which it is important that all parts of the sector uh, debate and discuss what should take place. Anything that diminishes those debates, such as surreptitious and secret recording, is to be regretted. That having been said, I am very gratified by the messages of support and encouragement I have had from principals, from chairs, and from many others in the sector in recent days. I'm confident that the collaborative efforts we are making to change the college sector for the good, not for individuals in the sector, but for young people in the sector, is on course. George Adam. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that there is no dispute between the Scottish Government and Stowe College? Cabinet Secretary. There is no dispute between the Cabinet Secretary, the Government or anybody else uh, between myself and Stowe College, the staff, students or boards. This is a matter of the conduct of one individual. That is where the dispute occurred. Liam McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary perhaps confirm whether he had a discussion with the Management Board of Stowe College uh, before uh, demanding the resignation of their chair? And could he further clarify whether or not there have been other instances where he's called upon either the chairs or principals of individual colleges uh, for the leading figures within uh, SDS or indeed any other organisation called for their resignations in these similar circumstances? I have no dispute with any uh, college board or any other board. My dispute, as I've indicated, is with an individual. It would therefore have been inappropriate for me to meet with the board uh, to discuss this issue. I met with the principal. Can it also be uh, with the chair? Can I also point out that I have no power to demand any individual's resignation? And the, I pointed out to the individual concerned that the relationship of trust between us had broken down, and I asked him to reflect upon that. I have no power to remove anybody in any position in the college sector, and indeed all power of direction to the college sector was removed by a Labour minister some years ago. Question number two, Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what plans are being made to introduce a high-speed rail link between Edinburgh and Glasgow. Minister Keith Brown. <laughs> you deserve that, Minister. 
key economic centres in Scotland, as across the UK, is vital. We have carried out a high-level assessment demonstrating that a new high-speed line could be built by 2024 with journey times of less than 30 minutes. The Scottish Government will now enter talks with our partners in both cities and the rail industry to see how we can work together to see this vision realised. A Glasgow-Edinburgh high-speed line which can connect to the network from England. Lord MacDonald. I thank the Minister for that answer. Can the Minister outline what benefits there will be to Scotland's two major cities of almost halving the journey time between Glasgow and Edinburgh? Minister? We believe there will be substantial benefits, both uh, economic every time there is at least uh, even a, a minute of reduction in journey time between uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, we are told there is a substantial economic benefit. Uh, there are benefits in terms of accessibility, social, economic and environmental benefits from upgrading that link. Of course, it would make a, a fifth option available. But it is also true to say that it is about the wider benefits of the rest of Scotland and, of course, the UK from having that high-speed link uh, there in the first place. And also, I think, shows the uh, intent of the Scottish Government to make sure that high-speed rail comes to Scotland uh, as soon as possible. Mr MacDonald. Uh, I thank the Minister for outlining the benefits. Will the new speed, high li speed line be linked to the cross-border service to London, and has the Minister any plans to meet with the UK Transport Minister to discuss the UK high-speed rail plans? Minister. Yes, I do. I uh, hope to meet with the Secretary of State for Transport in the next week. And, of course, the intention is to have that high-speed uh, link come all the way from London uh, to Scotland. Indeed, if we were not to do so, then the capacity constraints on the West Coast Main Line itself, which will reach, reach a critical stage by 2024-25, will mean that billions of pounds will again have to be spent on that line in advance of any further high-speed rail connections. So we will be having that conversation with the UK Government. And in that regard, can I welcome the statement by the Secretary of State for Transport, Patrick McLaughlin, when he said at his Conservative Party conference that he hopes to have a three-hour timeline for rail between Scotland and London. And that will form the basis of some of our discussions. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister inform the Chamber of the technology and route that is being proposed? Does he see it as being conventional rail or maglev technology? That was our proposal in the 2007 elections. When will the Minister publish details of his proposals? Because doesn't he get the fact that the cuts to the Glasgow-Edinburgh rail improvement programme mean that commuters in the central belt are now missing out on reduced journey times and that 2024 is a very long way off? Minister. I think that uh, question does not take account for the fact that we are actually announcing an initiative here which will half the journey times between Edinburgh and Glasgow. It is true to say that what we announced yesterday was our intent. Just the same way I would imagine this when the fourth bridge was proposed, people announced their intent, or when the Glenfinnan viaduct was announced, or indeed when the Secretary of State for Transport announced the three-hour uh, aim. That is the intent. What we now have to do is to make uh, the plans uh, go forward in relation to that, both in terms of trying to um, work out the actual route it will use some of the existing network as the current intention, but there is a possibility for uh, a largely new line to take place there. It is not intended uh, in any plans that I have seen so far to have maglev technology for uh, some fairly fundamental reasons, but it is the intention to start to look into this in some real detail now. But, of course, we are right to say that we have the ambition to do this. That ambition is extremely important, and I believe has been the hallmark of this government. Alex Johnson. Thank you. Given the timescale and the indeterminate budget that has been put forward for this, uh, is it not the case that it would have been better to invest a little resource into improving the existing service so that we could cut journey times? Or is this proposal simply an excuse for no, not investing in the Edinburgh-Glasgow route between now and 2024? Minister. I mean, how that statement can stand when we've recently announced a £650 million package of investment in that very line, to me, just points to the absurdity of the Conservative position, not least given that their own Secretary of State for Transport has announced this aim for a three-hour journey time between London and Edinburgh, with no detail on study, no detail on the cost of a study, no detail on the likely cost of new construction. Now, I don't criticise them for that, and I notice that Alec Johnson didn't criticise them for that, although he's ready to criticise this government for our intention to try and improve the link between Edinburgh and Glasgow. It is absolutely right that we state these intentions, we state the ambition that we have. What is not right and what is not surprising, unfortunately, is the complete lack of ambition displayed by the Conservative Party in relation to this. We have that ambition for Scotland. We have stated our intention and we will get to work on making sure it happens. Well, Rennie. Um, yesterday, the Cabinet Secretary said, and I quote, she now knew all this was possible. Can the Transport Minister point to a single piece of documented evidence? that backs up that claim that it can be done in 12 years 
with a journey time of 30 minutes. Cabinet uh, Minister. Yeah, I think if Willie really, Rennie would like to look at the Fast Track Scotland document which uh, we published some time ago and the work that's subsequently been done by that group, he will see the rationale that's been put together for this. I think it is extremely important that we do recognise this is a statement of intention. We have said, and the Cabinet Secretary said yesterday, we have work now to do on the planning for this. We have to identify uh, the funding for this. But we have stated our ambition, as we've done in many other uh, transport uh, projects. And really, if you don't have the idea in the first place, you're not going to make these vital changes to the infrastructure uh, of the people of Scotland. It's just probably a, a good thing for Scotland that we have a government that's willing to take on those big projects, to state that ambition, and then to follow it through by completing these projects on time and on budget. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. On, in an article in the Herald on the 5th of July, the Minister is quoted as saying that the original Egypt programme program was revised. Um, one of those reasons was for it to tie in with a future high-speed rail network in Scotland. Just to ask the Minister how this new announcement will um, impact on the original Egypt um, programme and if he is still committed to seeing in the future phases of Egypt implemented, as previously stated. Minister. I can absolutely give uh, Mark Griffin that assurance that we intend to see the Egypt project through. And in fact, as I did try to say at the time, I reckon we could achieve around 80% of the benefits that the original uh, scheme of a billion pounds had proposed. Uh, I think there's every possibility we can increase that percentage, getting towards 100%, perhaps not 100%, but getting towards 100% of the benefits of the previous scheme, but we remain absolutely committed to the Egypt works taking place. Neil Findlay. Given the desperate situation following the halls closure, will the Minister look again at the Egypt project and the cuts to it and reflect, to this, and reflect on the uh, advantages we would get from a new station at Winchborough? I think that is a bit wide of the question. We now move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 44.